Okay. Now we can start our talk. Good afternoon. Uh, today we start extension number 15. Uh, as I did in the past, today we do only this stanza and the story uh, behind the story, behind the stanza. So you repeat after me. Ida sochati, repeat after me. Ida sochati, Ida sochati, Pecha sochati, Bantiji. Yeah. Can you make it bigger? We cannot see it properly. It looks very small to us. Oh, in my computer it is very big. Okay, let mm -hmm. me make it bigger. Uh, I think... Uh, okay. Can you see it now better? No, but it's the same. No? I think I think you need to um stop the screen share and then start it again. How come it should be? Huh? Open. Can you see that now? No, Bante. Uh, they think uh, if you then the base of the name. So it is. Then the name. Stop, stop, you know. Um, I'm doing it. Oh. Are a palaing screen share key and a button a click curler, a pow carroting, hurry, I kill a key. No, ah, make it a donor. Oh, then recover. How is it now? Can you click the screen share again? But now it's good. I did that. Now it's good. Yes, but thank okay. you. You can go to the rose. Uh -huh. No need to touch this. Okay. Now, repeat after me. Ida so chati. Ida so chati. Ida so chati. Pecha so chati. Pecha so chati. Papa kari. Papa kari. Ubayatta so chati. Ubayatta so chati. So so chati. So so chati. So vihanyati. So vihanyati. This so kamma. This so kamma. Kill it tongue. Atano Kiritam Atano. Okay, I read the whole sentence. Ida so chati, pecha so chati. Ida so chati, pecha so chati. Papa Kari Ubayat so chati. <laughs> so, so, jati, so, vihanyati. 
ोचतिचति पापकारी उभयत सोचति पापकारी उभयत सोचति सो सोचति सो व्यान्यति सो सोचति सो व्यान्यति दिस्वा कम किलिठं अत्नो डेथ इज not here but death is understood either in this life and pecha after death sojati sojati laments laments so either sojati here he laments pecha sojati after death he laments there is no word for he in pali here but when we use the word the verb the word implies the person and number singular number and the person person can be any person male female any number any gender But sojati is singular. We can use he, he laments, she laments, it laments, and so forth. Sojati means laments. Papakari wicked doer, the wicked, papakari the, the one who does wicked thing. He is called papakari. पाप एंड कारी पाप मीन्स अनोलसम कारी मीन्स डूइंग बोट पुट टुगेदर कॉल पाप कारी उभय उभय मीन्स बोत उभय बोत प्लेस सोचति लेमेंट्स and then so sojati so means he sojati laments again so he vihanyati suffers vexation suffers vexation then this was having seen that the word uh, is saying you see this wa this wa kamma the deed kamma is a deed kilitang means defile devile defile kamma atno his own so idha sochati pecha sochati here he laments after death he laments papakari ubhayata sochati the wicked one laments in both places so sochati so vyanyati he laments he suffers vexation 
here we have that he grieves. He feels very, very sorry. Then this wa kamma kilitam attano. Seeing the defilements of his own deed. Now, ida sochati, pecha sochati, papakari, ubayatta sochati, so sochati, so vihanyati, diswa kamma kilitta matano. We break it as kilitang atano. Now, <coughs> repeat uh, the, each sentence after me until you are familiarized with the words. This also is a very, very important stanza. I tell you the, the story behind this later. Ida sochati, pecha sochati. Papakari ubayatha sochati. So so chati so vihanyati. So so chati so vihanyati. So so Okay, let me tell you the story behind this very important uh, story to remember. There was a man just behind the Jetavana Monastery. Jetavana Monastery is the place where Buddha lived 25 years. Most of his uh, life he spent in Jetavana Monastery, the monastery built by Anatha Pindika, very generous supporter of the Buddha. He built this monastery and Buddha was living there. People every day, people went to see the Buddha with flowers, with food, with incense, to pay respect to the Buddha, uh, they went there. Behind the monastery, there was a man, his name was Chunda Sukra. Chunda Sukra, Chunda means small, Sukra means pig. He is called a small pig. In uh, when there is a scarcity of food, he got some rice and other uh, provisions, load his truck, his uh, cart with all these things and went to village villages. And they sell this, you know, he exchange. He exchange, you know, this called barter system. He exchange this rice and other uh, provisions with pigs, piglings. So he went to houses where they have, where people raise pigs. And he buy these piglings, uh, in change of in exchange of rice and other provisions and then he brought them and behind his house he made a sty pig sty uh, enclosed area where he raised these pigs and uh, feeding with all kind of junk Pigs normally eat very, very dirty things, uh, including human excrement. So he raised these pigs, and when they 
grew up after a couple of years, he tied these pigs to a post firmly sunk in the ground. He tied the pig very tightly so he cannot move. And then he gets a square club post a stick which is square and beat the pig to make his flesh tender. When a pig is beaten with a stick, his squealing is so ear-piercing sound and he beat and beat and beat and beat until he felt that pig's flesh is tender. And then he opened his mouth and put a stick in the mouth and get some boiling water and he had a big pot of boiling water next to him and put a sort of a peg into the pig's mouth to remain it open <coughs> and <coughs> pour this hot water into his mouth. This hot water will go through his uh, guts and pass through behind with all the dirt in his guts, in his intestines. And he keeps pouring, pouring, pouring until he sees the water is clean. That means there is no dirt in his guts, in his uh, intestines. And then <clears throat> With a sharp knife, he cut his throat and collect the blood into a container. And then remaining water, hot water, pours onto his body to clean the body and make the, uh, the remove the skin. And then cut up and cook ate with his family members, his wife and children. They all hear and see what this man had been doing. Every so often, perhaps one pig may last a couple of days for the family and then another pig, another pig, when the he runs out of pig, then he goes to villages, sell rice and other provisions and pick up more pigs and bring in, kill and kill. And then <clears throat> he did this for 55 years, 55 years. And a week after 55 years, one whole week, he, after that he, he was uh, affected by certain disease and it became worse and he became behaved like a pig. He was squealing, running back and forth in the house. His wife and children closed the door so that he will not go out and he was running back and forth in the house, uh, squealing very, very much like pig. And monks in the monastery hear this sound, Buddha heard this sound, but one day they heard this sound of uh, uh, 
the pigs squealing continuously went on for one whole week. And then these monks went to the Buddha and said, Venerable Sir, there may be a big festival in Chundasukra's house because we hear pigs being slaughtered for one whole year, whole week. During these 55 years, he never went to see the Buddha, never listened to Dhamma, never offered flower, never offered morsel of food to the Buddha. All he did was killing pigs and selling the flesh and eating with his family. And when he behaved like a pig towards the end of his life, suffering, lamenting, uh, then uh, he was utterly distressed, utterly in highest pain imaginable, he was behaving like that. So the Buddha told these monks, because this is not, th there is no festival in his house. This man is suffering just like the pig that suffered when he killed him. And this actually happened. This happened, I have seen, you know, myself when I was uh, in uh, Malaysia, there was a man who collected snails and there was a river called Klang River and dumped all these snails into the river. Very often he did because there were so many big snails in Asian countries like Malaysia. So this man was dumping these snails into the river. One day, <clears throat> of course, once you put the snail into the river, they cannot swim, they drown and die. <clears throat> One day when this man took bucket full of snails and was dumping into the river, he slipped and fell into the river and drowned and died. He could not swim. So he, he was killing these snails by drowning and he himself drowned and killed. Another time, when I was in Florida working with the Vietnamese refugees, I read in the paper a man, a, a fisherman, he went to the ocean and threw his fishing rod and pull and he found a very heavy fish coming very strong, he pulled and pulled and pulled Finally, this swordfish, swordfish has a long sword-like uh, instrument in his mouth. And this fish came and hit this man's one of the eyes and he fell into the water and his eye came out. Then other fishermen came and rescued him, took him to hospital and then this eye got, it, it came out and then that socket, eye socket got infected and affected the other eye and that also got infected and both, he, he lost both eyes and pretty soon he suffered and suffered and suffered until he died. Now, the, this is what actually we have to remember. This is a kamma kilitang attano. 
when we do something wicked, bad, with hatred, the results will follow us and we also suffer exactly like the victim. So the Buddha said, when this man suffered for one whole week, suffered like a pig, his own victims of pigs, just like them he suffered and after seven days he died and was born in Avichi hell. Avichi hell. Among hells, Avichi hell is considered to be the worst of all hells. And he was born there. This is the results of his bad karma. So, before he died, he lamented, and after he died, after he died, he was reborn in hell. And seeing while he was going to die, he heard the pigs squealing in pain, and he saw that. And he, he did not have a very, even one fraction of a second of pleasure, joy, happiness. He had, he was consumed, engulfed with fire of hatred, engulfed with suffering. And he was completely affected by suffering before he died. And soon after death, he was reborn in that state. And therefore, we must uh, learn very important lesson from this story. Lesson is, if we do something bad, the results will follow us. And we suffer exactly the, the same way as we inflicted suffering upon others. This man inflicted pain and suffering on these pigs and eventually he got it back and he himself had had to die in a very painful death and suffered by seeing his bad deeds and suffered even after his death. This stanza is as good as all other stanzas we learned earlier. So friends, let us recite this story, this stanza once again. And, uh, and I like you to learn the stanza. And I hope you remember them, uh, at least some words of this stanza. Okay, let us recite. I recite it as before, and you repeat after <laughs> me. Then I want you to, then I want you to recite it. And after that, if you have any question about this, you may ask me. I'll be happy to answer. And then after that, we will have a short period of meditation. Okay. Let me recite the stanza line by line. And then you repeat after me, line by line. Idha so chati, pecha so chati. Idha so chati, pecha so chati. Papakari ubhayatha so chati. Papakari ubhayatha so chati. So, so, jati, so, vihanyati. So, so, jati, so, vihanyati. Diswa kamma kilitang atano. Diswa kamma kilitang atano. 
Once again I recite, then you recite by yourself, line by line. Ida sochati pecha sochati Ida sochati pecha sochati Papakari ubayat sochati Papakari ubayat sochati So sochati so vyanyati so, 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 Defile action. Atano oneself. Atano one's own. Seeing the defilement of his own deeds, he laments, he grief. Now I like you to recite line by line. Okay. Okay. <laughs> recite. Uh, very good, very good. Uh, now you have any question? Now, uh, yeah. Bante, I have a question. This is Kalina. Yeah. Uh, Bante, let, let's say uh, it, this person was not able to uh, purify this karma and he died um, without purification. But let's say at some point while he was still alive and he uh, had felt regret and he had decided to purify his uh, bad karma, what are the kinds of things that he need, need one needs to do to purify such karma? Ah, that's a good question. Good yeah. question. Now he has to go through, but while doing this, he... Uh, in, in this very life, uh, if you were uh, doing bad commerce, uh, then suddenly he meets a good friend and uh, listen to Dhamma. And then he thinks his good friend tells him uh, the wholesome things, how to do wholesome things and what are the wholesome things the benefit of all some things, and uh, life is very short. Uh, we have to make the best use of this life. Killing is uh, very bad, unwholesome, and we have no right to kill, and so forth. A Kalyana met the whole a good friend advises this person, and then this person realizes that what he had been doing was very bad, wrong, and uh, he, he knows that he was ignorant uh, of the repercussions, and now somebody has uh, uh, drawn his attention to the uh, bad results of his bad karma, and then he decided on the spot then and there never to do it again, never to do it again. And then he can continue his wholesome practice as his Kalyanamitta good friend recommended. We know, for instance, Angulimala. Angulimala, this man killed only pigs. Angulimala killed human beings. Of course, human life as a 
in the spiritual sense is uh, uh, very valuable. Uh, any life is valuable to the person, to the being. Now he killed uh, uh, 999 people, uh, counted, and he had kill, killed many more before that, before he started counting. So he met the Kalyanamita, the Buddha. Buddha asked him, asked him to stop killing. Angulimala stopped it right away. And after that, Buddha gave instruction to meditate. He did meditation and then attained enlightenment. So he stopped, purified his mind, even attained full enlightenment. There has been many people like that in the time of the Buddha. So Buddha happened to be Kalyana Mitta, hold what you call good or excellent friend. And similarly, if this person, Chunda Sukara, had a chance to go to see the Buddha, Buddha would have advised him not to kill and then he would have stopped it. Perhaps he would listen to the Dhamma and he would even attain enlightenment and would never kill again. But unfortunately, because of his own bad karma, he did not have an, any wish or desire to see the Buddha. And therefore he continued killing. And Buddha could not do anything, even though he lived behind the, the monastery, because of this man's own karma. Buddha could not intervene. So he continued killing. So that is what one has to do as soon as one recognizes what, what one has been doing is wrong, and then uh, completely change the life by doing just the opposite of bad things. That's what one has to do. In the, in the Dhammapada we will come across, there are stanzas like that, that uh, is, I, I mentioned it several times, yasa papam katam kamam kusalena pitiyati and so I'm the Abba Mutto Chandima, and so forth. Uh, Buddha said, uh, young, somebody is uh, who has done un or something, immediately realized that it was un or and give it up and practice Dhamma, meditation. Such a person shines like the moon free from clouds, like that. Yoja Pubbe Pamajjitta Pachya So Nappa Majjati. Again, one who has been unmindful before, and later he becomes mindful, and then he shines like a moon free from clouds and so forth. Okay, Kalina? Thank you very much, Bante. Thank you. Yes. Anybody has any other question? That's a very good question. Bhantiji. Yeah. This is Ruanti. Uh, yeah. Could you explain the word vihanyati a little bit more? Ah, vihanyati. Vi vihanyati uh, means uh, uh, we as actually the word suffering is a good term for vihanyati. Uh, and uh, and also gets upset. It's a, uh, uh, Sojati laments. Vihanyati, he suffers, mm -hmm. and uh, he's be he becomes sort of a despair. He feels so uh, regret 
regretful mm -hmm. and uh, he feels uh, uh, there is no word to express his uh, pain, sorrow, lamentation, grief and despair. All this come, all this uh, mean uh, Vyanyati. That means Vyanyati means all of them. All of them put together. Mm -hmm. The word Vyanyati we can use because Vyanyati is a very powerful word in Pali, which can expand in, expand in the grief, sorrow, lamentation, and so forth. Dukkha Dormanasa Upayasa. In Pali, Dukkha Dormanasa Upayasa. Uh, all this Vyanyati means all of them. Very powerful word. Thank you, Bhante. You are welcome. Uh, Kilita is defiling as opposed Parisuddha, Parisuddha, pure, Parisuddha is pure, Kilitta means defiled, Kilitta, uh, Atano Kamma, Kamma, Kilitta, Atano, actually separated uh, in order to make the meaning clear. Otherwise, they all use together these three words. This uh, Kamma Kilita Matano, we say it, uh, but we can break them down to three. Uh, this is an according to right view, right view, Samma Ditti. Samaditi, right view. For somebody who wants to practice right view, uh, those who have wrong view think that uh, uh, there is no results of karma. No results of karma. And they keep doing wrong, wrong bad karmas just like this man over and over again. There's a wrong view. Mitcha ditti. This man is endowed with Mitcha ditti. Samma ditti means there is the belief that karma has its own result and according to which somebody would be reborn and somebody will be happy or unhappy according to the karma. Now, friends, I think uh, our talk is a little extended. Uh, we don't have too much time to meditate. I think it is better for us to meditate. I'm encouraging you to ask questions, I, uh, but our, within our limited time, I want every Sunday for uh, children to do some meditation as well. Okay? Now let us close this and start meditation. <coughs> uh, I think uh, okay. Okay. I think this we recite at every time we meditate, morning, noon, or evening, or any time. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, 
born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness, this is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this <coughs> metta background, let us focus our mind on the breath and uh, be aware only of pure, simple, clean breath without thinking of the past or the future or without thinking of what we have seen, heard, smelled, tasted and touched and so forth. Without thinking of anything, they just keep the mind clean, pure, just like your breath. Focus your mind. In, notice inhaling as inhaling. Ex exhaling as exhaling. And stay like that until I ring the little bell.
by means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the foolish, may I all join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, friends, we end this session, and I hope uh, we continue this next week. And uh, there are several hundreds of stanzas in the Dhammapada, especially 426, 426 stanzas, and uh, some of them have only one story. In some, for each uh, stanza, there is another story. Uh, so I try to bring up these stories they are very fantastic, uh, and these are called Buddhist legends, Buddhist literature. In this Buddhist literature, we learn a lot of Dhamma, and therefore I encourage all of you, although the number is very, very small, it doesn't matter how many people come, I will continue it every week, every Sunday. Okay, continue your practice. I encourage you to read, practice, and I, as I mentioned in the morning, we all try to liberate from samsaric suffering. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you very Sadhu, much. Sadhu. 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 Okay. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Bhante. Oh, I can see everybody now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye, Bhante.